Hello everyone. Today uh, I will be doing for you a quick tutorial on how to get this character here um, moving and animating using Maya, Magicka Voxel and Mixamo. So I will try to make it as simple as possible and I will try to explain all my process in more detail than usually because many people ask me to do that so I, I will be doing that today. So let's let's go. The first things I do to prepare my character in Magicka Voxel are first getting my colors sorted. So basically when Magicka Voxel exports color it creates this uh, texture that is just like a line and concentrates all of the vertex of that line in a specific color. So if you don't know much about UV don't worry um, I will basically show you how, how I do it to fix this uh, this main problem. So the first thing I will do is try to get all of the colors. If you alt click on one of your colors, you will just point out where that color is. So I will try to get all of the, all of my colors in, in a main row here in the middle. So I have this yellow, I have this gray, then I have this brown. Try to be orderly so you don't miss any of the colors. Then we have this light brown, it's the same, and this, sorry, pressing the wrong button, alt. This is the dark one, this is the light one. Then this is the same, and I think these and these are, are all of the colors I, I used, so I will start replacing them now. Uh, in order to replace all colors at once, you select your packet and then you select this uh, option that says same palette color. So when you do that, you're basically replacing all the all the, the colors that are, all, all the voxels that have this color will be replaced with this other one. So for instance, if I made everything gray right now, I could start replacing you see the yellow state because I replaced it, but I, I will select now the gray and I will just replace all of the gray in here. Dark brown will be all of those and light brown will be all of those. So basically you need to understand that each one of these boxes here are a material in Magicka Voxel. So basically you are assigning to, to this not only the color, but a bunch of material properties that become available when you click on render so if you click on render and then you go in this box here you will see all of your material properties and notice that when i change to another box then these material properties change so even if i copy the color over here the material properties will not be affected because you're only copying the color doing that so okay now that i have these i will try to maximize the amount of space that these colors will occupy on the texture that it will be exported from Magicka Voxel. So to do that, I will press Ctrl Alt and I will drag, uh, sorry, Ctrl Shift and I will drag to one side and then to the next side. And now with Ctrl and Alt, I will just drag from one side to the other and that way I will just copy over. Basically what you're doing is a gradient. So imagine I had a, another color here like a green and I press Ctrl Shift and drag, sorry, Ctrl Alt and drag you will create a gradient between these two colors. So if, if you have the same color twice, it will basically create a, a gradient between the same color. So it's just a constant uh, color in that case, right? So I will do that for all of the colors. And you will understand why I'm doing this in a minute if you if you're not familiar with UVs and how Magicka Voxel exports them. So great, now I have all the colors I've used and all the greens are here and the next step will be saving this very important to keep saving new versions so that let's call this um, camo pose or tutorial and now let's start posing this this character so I will start by narrowing down the the work area I can click this button here and that will just fit it to the size of the model. Something else I like to work when I will when I do these things, I work in orthogonal because 
then I don't have to deal with perspective and when you try to select something in perspective you end up selecting like unevenly but if you are in orthogonal it's much easier to just get a straight line out of your selection so then I recommend you work with this uh, orthogonal view and the ruler toggled on so let's go first to a front view let's go zero zero here and let's start cutting and pasting the parts so I can separate them and um, I will just get one hand out so using this tool here I will select my hand and I'll control X to remove it then I press tab to go out of the uh, working area and then I press ctrl V right so when you do that let me just do that again you just select you go into your working area by pressing tab you select ctrl x tab again ctrl v when you do that it will basically create a second a second box the same size just containing the voxels you copied you, you cut it and pasted it. so then you just fit that and now you have your hand separated i will do the same with all the parts of the model i separate this hand now I will separate, maybe I will go to the left view to do the legs to be able to see them properly. Just cut, paste. If you don't move the camera, they, they are, they are placed in the same spot. Let's go back to my front view to do the other part of the legs. Let's just select all of these. Miss some with shift. I will drag another selection. Control X, Control V. Uh, let's feed all these things to, uh, so it's more clear you see I have both legs together so I will just separate them separate this one get everything now the arms are like that in my case boom boom then I will just get the head now let's get the neck. If, if the other parts of the body are bothering you, you just press Ctrl B and you hide them while you are inside of the working area when you press Tab. So I will do the next, the neck, next, boom. And now let's go to a side view again. Let's do the backpack. Yes, the one full object. And now the body. So the body. I separated in four pieces because that's how the magical the, the Mixamo skeleton works and I find find better results with that. So you basically have chest, hips and two side two chunks for the the space in between. So basically you separate it in four parts. So I go chest, it's all one thing in my case. Yeah, control V. Then I have hips. It's one thing. And then do your best to separate this in two pieces. If you want an easy way to know the middle of something, you can just paint a line, right? And when you paint a line, if you look down here, you will notice that it tells you the length in Z right now, you see? So it's it uh, is 14 pixels uh, long so you know that you can get seven and that's pretty much half of it and then you would have another seven here so I know that right here is the middle so I can just undo that with M I go to my selection tool and I just select those seven points so now if I close everything I need to separate the arm in two so I will just do the same thing um, if you go we can use paint in this case so we have 24 okay so let's get 12 pixels from the shoulder it's right there okay so then I think that was it right hold on let me try again Well, he's trying this clear one, so let's get all of those. And that looks a bit short, so let's do like that. No, 
let's do a bit more. Because I'm not, I'm not, yeah, I'm, I'm counting it wrong because the arm goes all the way, it's just a long glove, that's why I'm getting confused. So it's actually all the way down, and then we have 34, right? So let's go. Something like that is fine in those green ones. Oops. Okay. Let's do the same on the other side. And in this case, I will just leave. Did I cut it? Oh, I best pasted in the same. I don't know. I just didn't separate it. Yeah, that's right. This one piece. This is another piece. I will just leave it there to be easier for me to select here. Boom. Let's bring this back. And then I have all the parts separated. Make sure you don't have anything wrong. The neck is fine. So the next thing I will do is separate the toes because I like to have the ability to move the, the, the tip of the of the foot. So I will cut that right, and I will just select this one behind and cut and fit. So right now, all the parts are separated, and this is this. In my case, for the, the, the kind of models I do, this is ready for uh, going to Mixamo. I will save this. And something else you could do, you can press Ctrl V to see properly, is that consider that, that when you are separating the parts, you might start seeing stuff that you didn't see before. So make sure that's not a problem for you. So for instance, you can go and fix a bit of the the problems you might have in the middle of the geo if that's a problem for you otherwise just leave it I will just do it for the sake of this tutorial and the last piece that's fine the legs should be fine yeah cool so now that's done that's saved so something else I will recommend is that if you're using your layers uh, let's say you have something else somewhere uh, in another layer and it's hidden you just go through your layers and make sure you delete everything that you don't want to export because otherwise you will be exporting a bunch of things you don't need the next thing I will suggest is that you place your model in the middle of the world uh, if you are an orthogonal view is this, this becomes easier you just make sure the arrows point like the thick lines and that makes it so when you import it in the, in the other three softwares, this will uh, come exactly in the middle of the world and, and that will help you in a, in a lot of things. The next thing I will suggest you to do is to get your character in T-pose. So that means that the arms need to be horizontal to the ground, parallel to the ground. So let's rotate in Y and let's place this arm right there. Great, and now this is the same for this other one. Let's rotate and place it there. Once you have that, you save and you export as OBJ. Let's uh, your exports version 03. Place it there, come on, oh, tutorial OBJ, let's do it. And now let's go to Maya. In Maya, you will import. And actually, it's better to just go to the folder that you exported in, go view details and sort by type. So that way you can select all the parts at once, otherwise you have to import one by one in Maya. So you just drag and drop and then you have your character. It doesn't come with the textures visible, but you can toggle on here, this button here. And now we have our character. All I will do is scale it up because I find that when I export this into Unreal, it's very tiny. So I'll group everything and I 
and scale it up to third times um, and then I will export this if you want to know how to remodel the character or how to make proper textures like because right now if you open the textures you will see that it's this thing where all the colors are concentrated into a pixel right here and uh, let me know in the comments I can make a tutorial on that but I just don't want this video to be very long but basically what you need to understand is that each box here in Magica Voxel is one line on this UV so you see all this gradient of green that I have here goes from here to here so each part of this is like one uh, little line here so the more color you have horizontally the wider your line will be and basically you will get less gray tinting in your color like here you will get a more pure color so you basically use the one in the middle and expand to the to the sides okay we have the character scaled up let's just select everything and export this into Mixamo so let's go number four scaled let's call it hazmat scaled now let's go into Mixamo so in here you will have to create an account it's very simple and it's free and basically in this website you upload your character and it creates animations for it it's very cool so you click where it says upload character select from file and you select the one you just exported number four that has everything inside of it it will come in gray but if you want that to avoid that and have it with color i think you have to make a zip file and export that with the texture inside the texture and the obj and that will make it work okay you get this oriented is right now it's on the right orient orientation so let's go next now you have to place these circles where it says here so it says chin that means this circle goes right on the chin wrists in my case are here elbows somewhere in between knees are here and the groin just place it a bit above the line of the groin something important is that in my case this character doesn't have fingers so I will select no fingers here that makes it so it doesn't create bones that you don't need okay great your symmetry is on because my character is symmetrical so let's go this will take just a second to process the character and it's right now creating the bones and making the skinning is very very clever and very cool and once this is done you will be able to basically select and download animations all the animations you want it's so so cool so let's give it a second great now it's done and the character starts to move already that's great so let's press on where it says next yeah here it's telling me that the other one I uploaded before will be deleted that's fine and boom here's our character right now it's in t-pose I like to download this t-pose to be able to reconnect the bones so I will just without clicking anything I will press where it says download and download I will go ahead and create here another folder that will be called animations and my animation is downloaded I will put it here it's depose and now we can start selecting animations for whatever we want this character to be doing we can search for I don't know run or idle or really whatever you want so you can select one and the character will automatically assume that animation and start playing it you can change for instance the post the posture if you want the chest to be taller or lower uh, actually the hips go lower in this case so each animation has some parameters to be adjusted if you want faster if you want to trim a specific part of the animation and there's poses this side is so great so i'll just download 
an animation, whatever, this one is fine. Just to show you how I apply them. So let's download this one, boom. And I have it here, let's call it idle. And now the next thing I will do, I still have my Maya file here in the typos. So I'll drag and drop. First I will save this file, save as. Uh, let's call this Maya. And uh, let's call this file hazmat 00 version 001. And then you can call this whatever you want, post. And now I will just drag and drop the T post in. So you see that my character became small again let's make it big this is why I save the files sometimes Maya goes a bit crazy uh, and now if we press here on the on this uh, option that is uh, x-ray joints you will be able to see the joints underneath your character so basically each one of these bones in theory will control a part of the body I, I do it this way because I like to reconnect everything to avoid the bending. You see how, for instance, here the elbow is bending? I don't like that in my characters. I like them to be more like robot parts that they don't bend. So that's why I reconnect everything. So you guys ask me how I do it. So that's why I'm doing it this way. So basically, I will go on and select one joint, one bone here. That it, that it came to the program and I will change where it says modeling I will change to rigging sorry not rendering rigging oops let's delete this slide and now the options here will change so that's why I changed that now that I changed this to rigging I can select where it says skin and I can press where it says bind skin but let's go into this little box on the right to be able to customize how the skin will be binded so I change it instead of uh, joint hierarchy, I think it's the option that comes from default, I change to selected joints. This way it doesn't create any skinning, so it doesn't deform. So I will just uh, press apply. And now when I move this, it will just come together with this piece of geometry. So I will do the same here, I will select the bone, then select the geometry, I'll press G, which in Maya means repeat last action. And that way I have this bone, so I have these two now. So you see how I start rigging this character very quickly. I press G again for the hand. The hand is not moving, so let's do the same for everything. This arm, this one, the hand. This is the neck, this is the head. And now what I was saying before, you have one for the hips, Unfortunately, the bone was created a bit high. So yeah, maybe in when you're doing this, just make the hips a bit higher or just place the groin a bit lower. So let's do that. Then this part will control this. This will control this. And the chest will be this one. Moving on to the legs, G. This is the other part of the leg. Of course, you can do this however you want. I'm just showing you the basics and then you do it properly. I'm doing it very quickly too, so. And then this foot goes there. And right now, in theory, we have all the pieces together. We are missing this leg. And the backpack, I will just connect it to the, maybe to this bone here, so. So then this phone controls the backpack too. Okay, now that everything is done, I will just save another version of this. So I can go back if I realize that this is not working properly. Number two, let's call it rigging. Now that this is done, I can just drag and drop any animation I want. So I, let's go with the idle animation I have here. Okay, something that is happening here and I think the problem, I will just reopen this file. Uh, is that I didn't freeze 
the transformation of this group. I don't know if it's, I think it's too late now to do it. Um, so if I go modify, freeze transforms, yeah, okay, that's a problem. You need to freeze the transform so you get rid of this scale here, but that's fine. Um, let's bring this aisle animation and let's give this another scale of 30 and that's it. So yeah, these this legs are going a bit outside because of the placement of my hips, but you can see that the animation now should be played. If it doesn't, just drag and drop it again and it should work. Um, so you see now my character is moving and is following the bones. You can always fix this kind of things by selecting your bones. You can go into the animation tab and then, oh, you actually don't need to do that. You go to animation graph editor and you can just, you see, you only have animation on the rotation. So you can basically move this in. If it's just for a quick render, just move it in. Maybe move all the hips a bit higher and you can lower these legs. So I generally do this quick and dirty when I'm trying to work on, on a quick render, right? So the same for this, you can just move it there, fix it however you need. Now when you play it, it should be a bit better. Um, let's hide these bones. Cool, so for instance, if your arm is too high, you can also do that for the arm. Let's do it, just place it a bit that lower down. And let's say for instance, you would like this, you cannot rotate because you see you have a keyframe in every frame. So you cannot just rotate this because on the next frame it will just jump. So the way to do that is you select one of the, oops, one of the curves on the graph editor. You select everything. And then with shift pressed with the middle mouse button, you move up or down. So that way you're moving the whole animation. You're changing the rotation of the whole animation. Yeah, so if you wanted, I don't know, the arm to go a bit upwards, you just move the X and then you go. If you want this guy to be like Scorpion from Mortal Kombat or something, you just move it a bit like that and it will have that ninja Mortal Kombat pose. Okay. So that's basically all I do uh, to make my animations in, in Maya. And if you wanted to, to just change this animation for another one, let's save this one for instance, uh, save. By the way, you can export this as an, an, XP, an FBX and you can import this in Unreal. So let's save this as animation one. And let's get another animation just to test it. Then my favorite one is Capoeira. And uh, let's get it. There you go, look at that. Boom, download. Now that we have it, we save this one on the folder and then drag it in. And now let's, is it moving? Yeah, now let's, scale this back up you shouldn't you shouldn't need to do that if you don't forget to just uh, modify freeze transform before you start doing all the rings so the same thing there you go your character is dancing capoeira like crazy and in my opinion it just works so much better than this bending character but if you didn't want to do all the part where i connected the bones and everything you can just simply start a new scene and drag and drop the file and this will be just like you see it in and oh sorry not that just like you're seeing it in Mixamo it should be here somewhere yeah there you go you see you have it with all the bands and all the bones are connected and everything but if you didn't want that then you do what I just did and there's your character and it should have textures if it doesn't you can just import the textures um, from your export number four just any of these will do let's bring this into 
the hyper shade and connect it to a material in this case let's just use a lambent material this goes on the color and this goes on the character and on the backpack and there you go you see it breaks all over the place if your character is very simple or if you or if you're gonna see it from a far distance then i guess this is fine but hey there you go you have a character very fast without having to do pretty much anything complicated running in Maya. This is ready for a render. You can export this into a game uh, like in Unreal or Unity and just use it however you want. So I hope this helped you. If it did, please consider subscribing, following me on Instagram too. I'm really trying to make this game a reality and it would really help me to have more people interested and more followers. So thank you very much for watching and I hope it helped you. Bye.